Hello, everybody, and welcome to another mystery box function challenge. In the purple box, there's some mystery math, and your challenge is to figure out what that is. You can use the link in the description to try this out, and when you think you've got an idea, come on back and see if we get the same thing. Okay, let's start with a zero. Okay, so zero gives me, gives me one. How about a one? So one gives me that infinity error, and when that pops up, I usually start thinking, is this a rational function? So we'll we'll take a note there about that. Let's see what we get as we go on here. How about a two? Oh, two gives me a one as well. Hmm, how about a three? Okay, now we're we're getting something. How about a four? Okay, so we do seem to have a curve here. Let's look at some values between one and two. So let's put in one and a half. And maybe let's look at, you know, one and a tenth. Okay, and that's very close to um, to this this line. Um, x equals 1, but not quite touching it. So I think we've got an asymptote here at x equals 1, and an asymptote it looks like at um, at the x-axis as well. Let's see if, if this is doing the same thing over here. I think we've got another arm here. So let's look at some points further out in the negatives. This is 0.5, and how about a negative 2? It looks like we've got a, a similar kind of arm there, and let's um, let's try some fractional values as, as well here. So let's put in one half. Now let's go ahead and put in one tenth as well. Whoops. Ah, what I meant was nine tenths. Yeah, okay, so we've got two symmetrical arms here. So one arm out here and one arm out here. And it looks like where the, the function is undefined, where these, these two arms shoot up to infinity, is at this point uh, x equals 1. So to get that point, the x equals 1 undefined, you want to have the bottom of your rational function uh, equal to 0 then. So it, when x is 1, if we put in a minus 1 here, then this would become undefined and you get that kind of asymptotic behavior there. However, one over x minus one would be an arm here and an arm down here. There'd be sort of two arms opposite each other uh, uh, diagonally, but we've got these two arms all um, uh, above the x-axis. And that happens, well, let's see, it happens if you were to square this. So one over x squared would give you those two arms like that. So maybe this is 1 over x minus 1 squared. Let's let's see if that works out. Does it work out at 0? If I put in a 0 here, I'd get 1 over negative 1 squared. Negative 1 squared is 1. That'd be 1. So that works out. How about at, at 3? So 1 over 3 minus 1 quantity squared. So that's going to be 3 minus 1 is 2 squared. You get 4, so 1 fourth. So 3 should give us one fourth, but we're not getting that. We're getting 0.50. Oh, so it's not squared. So what else could do that besides squaring? You know, the squaring has the, the function of making everything positive. So any value, negative value you put in here or, or negative value that this would equate to inside the parentheses gets turned positive with the squaring. There's another thing that does that, and that is the absolute value. So another possibility is this could be one over the absolute value of x minus one. So let's see if that works. Again, if we put in if we put in zero here, we get one over the absolute value of negative one, which is positive one. So one over one, that'd be a positive one. So that looks good. Let's try it with the three. So that'd be one over the absolute value of three minus one, and that would be uh, two. So one over two. Ah, that is one half. So that's what we're getting there. So I think I think that's looking pretty good. Um, Let's try it with um, let's try it with one half and see what we get just to test one more value. So one over the absolute value of one half minus one. So one half minus one is negative one half. So one over the absolute value of negative one half, and that is just one over 
one half because the absolute value of negative one half is a positive one half and one over one half is two and um that is um where'd it go here it is that is exactly what we got so i think this has got to be it. i think it's the uh one over uh the absolute value of x minus one so let's go ahead and check yep there it is okay and let's graph that as well yeah, so you get these two arms. We're used to seeing that with the 1 over x squared type, but 1 over an absolute value of x um, gives the same kind of thing. We've just shifted it over 1 with that minus 1 in the denominator. Well, how did that go for you? I think that wasn't the easiest one in the world. Let me know. Thanks, everybody.